Okay. I'm going to try this again. But I really want to get on to the drawing, so if I don't get the fire working, I'm going to at least set everything up in place. this out tomorrow. Come on. You know what I'm trying to do is sort of burn off the extra wax. Get that wick exposed so I can take to this. I'm really frustrated because I usually leave about half an inch when I trim a wick. I don't know why this one... Maybe, maybe the way the person I actually bought this candle, I didn't make it, so maybe the way the person made it, well, maybe it was the type of wick, I don't know, but it, this is very frustrating. You know what this is telling me? I look better in the dark. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. But that's also why I got the gun here, because I was afraid I would be... Well, actually, it was because I was going to reach over to the original spot, but... Oh, this is just annoying. Come on, baby, you can do it. Come on. Light my fire, come on baby, light my fire, try to set the night on fire. Oh man, that bites. Alright, so you know what, I'm not going to waste any more time with this today. I wanted the wax in the front, so I'm going to put this back right here where I put the charcoal. Okay, I think that's going to work. So what I want to do right now is just get started with the shapes. Because at this point, if I like where this is, I wanted these, remember I wanted these shadows here for the oak to give the defining shapes of the oak leaves. So now I need to sort of get all this in place and really I want to start painting that before it dies. So. If I want to use the sight size stuff, which let's just get started on that. Okay, you can tell that's a lovely horizontal line. I just want to start getting some relationships going. And I know that this is going to be about this thick. Now, really when I'm painting, I'll be straightening all these lines out, probably with a ruler. But, again, maybe I won't, because like I said, I'm trying to be more natural in my approach to things. Breaking away from... I mean, when people say that my work looked, oh, that looks just like a photo, it it looked real like a photo, but it wasn't hyper-realism. I don't know how to explain it, but hyper-realism, I don't think it has light and shadow so much. It's more really like photographic bright light everything and there's no change in movement of tone and things like that so um all right now what i want to do is i want to here where's my boat i want to get my knitting needle here okay this knitting needle is a really 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 good tool to use to measure verticals, horizontals, angles, this sort of thing. Because it's fairly, even though it's fat, it's bec because it's fatter, it has a lot more strength than some other things do. So what I want to do is step back, and I'm going to put my hand like this, keep my arms straight so that I minimize the variations. Remember how we talked about measuring. And what I, what I want to do at this point is stand back and say, okay, my canvas is this wide, when I move it over here, you can see I don't have the angle actually pro properly for my vision here. Uh, 
And that just changed all that. I pushed that in with my chest, I think. So I want the oak leaves. Oak leaves, that's good. That can be, that's, that's all right. Actually, when it was here, it showed more oak leaves. Maybe I don't want that repetition, I don't know. Let's do that. Okay. So anyway, my point is, if you want to think about me drawing here and I'm doing this, my arm, you're basically the radius of a circle, okay? So theoretically, this should be equal to that, which would mean that should be curved differently, but it's not going to work. At a distance, you don't really get that much difference, and that would work like this. What I want to do is, when I stand back, say, okay, from this point of view, my canvas looks like it's this space. Move that over there, and from way back there, this space. So I want to decide at what point do I have this, and what point do I have this. What I'm going to try to be doing is, I don't want this pumpkin to be right at the middle, cut the canvas in half. I'm probably going to want the pumpkin to go a little bit over here, knowing that the green is going to come back in, but I don't necessarily want the green to be in half either. You see, they probably want the green about like this, with the, the drape coming down over here and then this here, and then the candle up here, okay? So what that's what I want to try to do right now, is make a decision about those. And, um, let's see. So right now I'm measuring from my point of view here. Technically you would mark a position on the floor so that you don't forget where you were. Okay. So now I swing this over here, and the pumpkin is about three quarters of the way down. Now above the, actually from this point of view, from this point of view, this line actually lines up with this. So theoretically this one doesn't even exist here, which is kind of funny, but it would come down here. And I kind of actually enjoy that, too, because it makes this a lot longer, which may or may not be good, but... So it puts the horizon line right back in here. Okay, horizon down, that's the length, because I'm actually looking down at the board there, so I'm going to see some wood sticking through all that. Okay, so... That's okay. I'm cool with that. All right. Now, again, measuring that. So what did I say? The pumpkin was three quarters. So what I want to do now is visually measure from either here, because you want to work large to small to get fewer mistakes and block in. So let's say from the bottom of the board here, how tall is it from this point to this point, you see? going across, okay? So I'll come back to my space here, and I'm going to eyeball that, and I see the pumpkin right about this level. Back up, and I'm going to look again. Do I have enough space um, there? And I go, eh, possibly. You know, because also I can, if I need more space here, I can move that down. But So let me look at the high point of the pumpkin because it may be I want I don't want it that low on the canvas. I don't want it to be middle vertically either. So let's see. That's not bad. And top of the pumpkin is right about here. Okay. Now the starting is you know it's probably not that much fun to watch somebody start this sort of process because it's a lot of back and forth and correcting yourself and that sort of thing. But um, I'm thinking that this comes out maybe three quarters. I don't know. What is that? Is that three fourths? One, two, three. No, it isn't three fourths. So let's say what's going to be half of this canvas right about here. This is one of the trainings here I should do, and since I haven't done this in a long... Oh, that's a pretty good half. Okay, so that's half, so I need half of this. 
half of this is going to be about here. So I was thinking that the pumpkin was right about here, but this is the extreme of it. So it's got an angle here going like this, and then we're going to do this, and then we're probably going to do that, and then go down here. Here's, here's your, your pumpkin kind of thing. I don't, I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing, putting that in there right now. I mean, I'm saying I'm guessing, but it's an educated guess. Do I like that? Maybe. I think I want the pumpkin... See, I'm measuring the width of the pumpkin to the height of the pumpkin. So, measuring... Whoops. When, when, you, when you do that, you really have to stay still exactly where you are and try to minimize all your variables. Otherwise, you're going to be just chasing your tail the whole time. I did the width all right. Actually, I did the height pretty well, too, because I didn't count. Now, see, from my point of view, the high point here wasn't in the center so much. Fewer pumpkin to the left than it is off to the right. So let's just sort of sketch this in, that I got this kind of thing going on here. And then it'll kind of drape down right there, okay? So, do you see what I'm doing is I'm really just working the broad shapes right now. So, when I get into the blanket, or the scarf or whatever, it's going to be going off in this way. And then I'm going to have... This part, uh, this part of the scarf doesn't quite come halfway. See, because I, I don't really... I like asymmetrical stuff here. So when I'm doing all this, even if this scarf was perfectly in half between this height and this height, I would probably choose one side or the other to put that off because that's my personal taste. Other people may really enjoy the symmetry of it because there is no judgment in this. It's your voice, your composition. You do all this stuff. I personally like asymmetrical stuff. And I also wonder, because I like asymmetrical stuff, Maybe that's the reason that I find it really difficult to do symmetrical stuff. So, anyhow, I've got that going on there. I don't remember... Oh, I have this as an arrow. I don't really need that there. In fact, what's happening is that kind of messes me up for my looking at the overall shapes of things. Let's get rid of this, too. So, And this is um, a reason that you would use charcoal, because you can take it off. And so it's just really easy to smudge it around and stuff. If I wanted to do a tone painting, I could put it in there. When you put your pigment in, it kind of muddies up the pigment a little bit, makes the color a little greenish and dark, obviously. But just to do these light sketching so I can figure out positions and then look, once I get this design on here, I kind of want to forget what's here and look at this composition. Do I like where these shapes are going and how it's all going to work out? Okay. It's the same thing when you carve stone. I may have a maquette, but I there's a certain point where I let go of that. I'm just going to cheat here because I know that this is sort of an oval shape here. Okay. So you see, I'm not going to really see a lot of the horizon, but I need it there so that I can make relationships because this is what this is all about, actually, is making relationships. Okay, so the other thing I know about the pumpkin is the widest spot is about halfway up the height of this. So this is, you know, these, these shapes will be refined later, but what I mean is I'm pulling this back here, and probably this is coming back, you know, whatever. Again, that's all going to be worked out a little bit. So what I want to do Okay. Now the thing is if you're going to use the sight size stuff you need to make sure that you're holding your stick horizontal because I tend to do stuff like this. I mean, I'm exaggerating it to make my point with you, but not so much. <laughs> so when you're holding the stick out, keep your arm straight and try to keep this hor horizontal. So what I see is, of course, this is going back as a curve. 
but it's actually coming down closer to the, the pumpkin here. So again, when you're doing your comparisons, you have to remember which part of you are. And this is a circular object, so it's natural that it's going to be doing some of this. Let me get rid of some of that, that way I can see this shape. Okay, so, and again, this is a circular object that I'm, I can kind of see down into it, and that's why the sides are higher up. It's all about my point of view. If I was a shorter person, I would see this more as a straight line. Does that make any sense? Um, okay. Now, from my point of view, I see all of that hourglass part of the candle holder. And I see this. Now, the thing is, you'd be surprised when you do this whole system of trying to say that's the horizon there. When you walk up to make that mark, especially when you're just starting out doing this sort of thing, you could be an easy half inch off. So a lot of this is an exercise to train your eyes how to how to really see. So I've got that a wee bit high. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the hourglass part, the th thinnest part of that bottle, is pretty much halfway. So I'm just going to do one of these kind of numbers and you know, and so now I want to come in because, again, I want a vertical. Even if I've got this cattywampus here, I want a vertical. Now, this is an old object, and because of that, it might actually not be particularly straight. And uh, I want to put some of that personality into it. It's just that at this point, I just want to get some shapes in. Now, I'm trying to make that sort of symmetrical there, but I didn't even... All I was really thinking is that the glass fits inside of the basket, and I didn't really think about how wide this is compared to this, because this is going to be thinner. I mean, not as, not as long. So here I've got this. It's a little bit bigger, but I think the difference is more apparent on the bottle. So yeah, I can see that the bottom needs to be wider for sure. And I'm looking at the angle here of how this slopes up. This angle right here, okay. I think this probably needs to come out a little bit. And you know, these, these things will have their shapes and stuff that I'll develop later, but right now I'm not as interested in that. I'm interested in this width. Once I get that width, then I can pull this out, okay. Now, the thing is, I want to draw a center line here because whatever the center of this is, that's going to be the lowest point of this, the lowest point of this, the glass has to be equal, and then it's going to come out you know, equal here. I can see that it's too narrow. The other thing you have to realize is when you do this, if you don't put your knitting needle right on the center line, you're not going to see it. If this is off to one side because I'm making a relationship to something else, like maybe the distance between the edge of the pumpkin and the center line of this vase. I may want to see the center line and see that distance, and when I do, I can say, wow, that looks too thin. It's not too thin if you're counting the actual stick thickness. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but... Anyway, so... Come up here, and let's say I want this to be this little cup thing, you know, whatever. You get you get what's going on there, right? So I've got that. And then where do I have the top of the ca of the candle at this moment? Right about there. But I know I want to make it a little bit shorter. Because I want maybe a light to be here kind of thing. So let's say I want to do that. Okay. So to keep myself straight here, let's put in a straight line right in the center and then draw my candle. The candle's going to be fat going right into this cup here. It's going to be a fatter than usual candle. Candle. Now, the thing is, when you do a line drawing, it's surprisingly easy to see volumes in a very different way. If I were shadowing this all in, 
I would see this as a solid shape. I would see a lot faster that this is too thin compared to that. Right now I don't really see it so much. I mean, I kind of know it, but let's do that, okay? All right. And again, these will get refined as I go in. I'm not sure I want this candle to be quite that fat, but it really is going to see what's the center line. Do you see when I put the center line between this part of the Y? I can see that I need to move, the candle needs to move over to the right. Now, another thing that I'm going to be thinking about is the, I'm not going to worry about nails and stuff. That all comes in way later because it's too much of a detail. I do want to think about the, the height. I mean the width between this and this. You know, how many of these fits into those? From my point of view back here. For me, it's mostly interesting to get a change. And the other thing, if you'll notice, I have a dark background. So this is probably going to be a line that disappears. But I still need to paint it in such a way that my brain doesn't see it as disappearing. It's going to know the glass is there. Maybe it even gets darker here with a slightly less dark background there. It doesn't matter. I'll need to do something so you see it, but it's not an edge that's going to come forward to it. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself, and yet those are the kinds of things I find really, really interesting. So let me work a little bit on the foreground stuff. So let's see. The scarf might be easier to put in. And I'm going to do a vertical from the corner here of this and see where it intersections the, intersects the pumpkin, especially using this and maybe this line here, or even just the halfway point. Where does it, where does it do its thing? You know, what's the relationship between that? Now, I see it from this point of view as a little bit to the right of center, which is good because it keeps my brain happy. So let's say right about here, this might be the center of the pumpkin here, and we're going to go a little right, which is good because that's right of the center, not quite in the center. I, I may have to rethink that. I don't know. Uh, let me get it drawn in again, like I said, and stop jumping the gun. Okay, so... If the bottom of the pumpkin is there... Uh-huh. And I have this there. Let's do a basic line. I'm going to have a diagonal running from this point down to this point, to the, where the leaves are. I'm, I'm, this may stick up a little bit back from my point of view, but right now I'm just going to do a basic line and see where does that end there. I do kind of this sort of thing. It's going to go back and then and then here I'm just going to sort of do another one cut off after the 20 minute mark and I don't know when that was. Okay, so I'm hoping this shows up in the video. So anyway, um yeah, so what I was saying is that without this here I was looking at this shape. It's kind of a weird little S, except it's not really an S. Why do I say things like that? <laughs> I, need, I, I needed to put this in because it needed uh, um, some kind of weight or something over here. Otherwise, it was just, I don't know. I mean, maybe that would have worked anyway, but I'm still really contemplating where the drape is because in real life, it seems like it looks really nice. But... Here, I'm not sure that I actually like it so much. And uh, this needs to be lower here, showing less of that. I don't know what angle it comes in there. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I am going to say, what is the 
halfway point. Okay, so this stick is too short for this canvas. Let's just measure what I've drawn here is that half. It's almost perfectly half. So I know that that's something I want to change, but a part of me is thinking, well, maybe I don't really need to change it, but I don't know. It's not necessarily bad because you have all these other diagonal shapes going here. And I'm not sure that if it would help it. Because this looks like it's going at an angle here. So it could be it only is going to be at half point right there. And again, it could be that I'm concerning myself too much with the rules. Um, because... Hmm. You've got a few tassels here, and then you're going to have a grouping of tassels here. Then you're going to have a shadow coming in. Technically, I've got this really dramatic shadow here, which I don't know that I like that so much, but it I'm not really sure if that's going to bother me, this thing or not. Do I need something up here, or can this be atmospheric? That's another question I don't know. Do I want the shadow? I, don't, I Probably I'm not going to want the shadow angled here like it is there, but it could be an interesting thing. It's just, it's not something I feel like I want to do right now. So, I don't have my squares anymore, but what I want to do is try to back up and see the the picture here with the same proportion here and say, okay, because I like the setup as it is, but what if when I'm here, it doesn't translate and I have to move it. But then I thought, you're not going to move everything because this relationship to that and that are probably okay. The only thing I might change is I don't like this thing coming down right on the crack. But again, that may be a stupid concern because in the composition, I don't want this to go towards center more. So if anything, I'm going to pull this back. And actually, maybe I should. But it could be right now that this pumpkin isn't quite that over that way. Then I can pull this down and have this come here. Because, you know, this is an organic thing. I can still get the curly cues and the ideas and the shadow lying on the textured pumpkin. And um, all that, you know, I can still probably get all of that in there. And that's a small detail that can go anywhere because, technically speaking, I can probably do a lot of stuff with this pumpkin without having you know you're still going to know it's a pumpkin now i'm drawing too much while i'm standing here and again i'm seeing over into the top of that pumpkin where back there i'm not going to see into that okay so and i i don't know because right now i'm seeing that the shape of the leaves it's too short. It's definitely too short. The leaves need to be a lot larger. So what I want to do is say, okay, come in and get the large shape. How many of that goes into the pumpkin? So if I take that to the pumpkin here, that goes there. From my point of view, the leaves finish just to the right of where this goes in. So do you see how I'm making a relationship there? The leaves actually need to come out over this far. And now that I've decided that's my drop down here for that, and I don't want it, you know, I can also check this relationship. I can check this relationship, get all those kind of, the more relationships that you make, the better the composition is gonna to work together based on your live model if you're going toward realism. If I want to just randomly do all this stuff, I don't need to spend all this time doing what I'm doing. And to be fair, I'm actually 
going back to what I know how to do and the training that I've had and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm not convinced I want to do it, but then again, I don't really know how to go ahead because I'm working from a live model. And so those, those are part of my struggles when I think I want to do something new, but all of these studies that I've been doing with um, bright colors and the swishy marks and all the looseness and all that, I think I want to make that be texture of my stuff and not change my training about the shapes and the objects. It's just that how I deal with putting in this lovely texture and being free and trying to, to develop these things. But I want to add those freedom kind of mark making techniques and the texture and the layers into the classical approach that I have already learned that I, that I, that I actually do like. So I don't know where I put my stick. I'm using my natrium charcoal to measure, which is not a bad thing. Okay, so let's see where this goes as a vertical. It goes right up straight up through the arm. So the, now I'm assuming I have this straight because, you know, there's the concept of the fixed point that basically says pick one point to be your your fixed, the one you're not going to change. Maybe I'm going to relate every single thing to this point where this touches the pumpkin. It doesn't really matter where you choose your pick fixed point. I prefer to do it in a place that's rather central to minimize any errors that I would have because I can measure here to here a lot easier than I can measure this point to that point, you know, and so, but I also like to triangular, triangulate a lot. So for me, I can take this point to this point and always drop a vertical and horizontal down to make a triangle, but I can also take this point to this point to this point and make a triangle. I can see this particular shape way better than I can see anything marked on a grid, but that's because I see triangles better. Uh, my friend Daryl Potorf always says he sees in circles. My brain can't work around that. I don't know what to do with that. So, I mean, that's a circle and maybe that's a circle for him. And maybe this is a type of circle. I don't know how he does that, but work with what your brain works with. So I like triangles and I can see their shapes a lot better than I can see other kinds of relationships, see the squares, the grids, that kind of stuff. There's no right or wrong. You just are, it's a way that you need to make a relationship with stuff and go for that. Use that to your advantage. It will also develop as it goes along that you'll see stuff. So right now I'm just trying to get the basic size of these shapes figured out. So I have that and then I have one, one, Okay, so the height is about, okay, so the, the, the leaf has to go here, and that goes under there. Um, it's interesting because I say I don't want lines to match up, but at times, I like that balance of that. It's part of a, the mixture between the architecture and the romance. Architecture is your straight lines and your grids and stuff, and the romance is your spaghetti. You know, that's your, your curves, all your feminine stuff, and maybe the architect you want to call yin-yang, the male, male uh, stuff. But sometimes having these relationships line up is a good thing, and sometimes I want to off-kilter it. I'm not going to know at this point of the line drawing. I am going to know when I start filling in the tones, and I'll probably... I don't know what time it is. I may start painting on this tonight just so I can be thinking about it because it's amazing what happens when your brain is at rest. So my stick is too short here. So if I want to figure out half of this, put it like that. I'm pretty much in the ballpark. So I like this relationship here. I like this space here. Um, so we're going good with this. So maybe I can just wipe this baby out to see more of this shape. Getting more of the shape of the thing is. The thing is, I need to, when you're doing your charcoal drawing on canvas, try to be really light because I tend to have a really heavy hand on stuff. But what happens is you leave a physical dent in the canvas. And depending on how you paint, 
if you paint real th thin, as I tend to paint really thin, you may or may not cover up that dent in the canvas. So you really don't want to do that. Um, you don't want to leave it evidence of your line drawing, especially if you're going to change your mind later, which, you know, a lot of people do. I do. I change my mind a lot. So let's get rid of this baby. And I probably have an eraser in here somewhere, but... See, I may have driven that too, too small before. Okay. All right, let's leave that one line there. Okay. Stand back and have a look at this. It seems very much a composition of thirds, and then with the acorns kind of thing, you're you're just sort of plopping that off there. Um, for right now, I feel like I like this enough to move forward. Okay, so let me check again. I want to see if I've got enough space at the bottom. See, that actually, I actually don't have my canvas low enough for that, but I don't really want any candlelight being up too high. If I made, if I burn the candle down to this height, my light would be here. That would be kind of nice. And it would, like I said, it would break up this half being equal to that half. See, right there, those are the two halves. If I pulled that down, I might wish that I had raised this up. Do you see? But, um, I don't, I don't know if I... According to the sight size thing, that lowest tassel right here would be down here. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I don't, may, do I want to raise it up and shorten the candle? Or do I like it? But if I raise it up, let's take a look at this would end up being up here. And maybe I don't want that either. Now I've got too much. Where's my... Wait. I don't want to actually use a measuring stick with numbers in it, so I have this here. Because I have limited space, I can't use a stick that's too long. Let's just use this baby. All right. So right now, I've got the pumpkin here. Oh, wait, what did I measure? Where am I measuring? Okay, so the, I'm going to measure the body of the pumpkin here and not the actual sticky thingy. Oh. So I have no space to put this down. Okay, so I'm putting my finger right there. So that goes there. If I end up moving the pumpkin up, it could be that it would be half and half. And I don't want to do that with my brain and my mentality. So what I'm going to do is leave this here. If I need to change these hangy downs to be higher up, maybe I'll do that. But I think I can leave the, um, even this for now. I just want to start coloring in a background and stuff and get going on this. So let me put this video on pause. I'm going to go get my paint supplies. I'm just going to start it off with a... Um, Perhaps a burnt umber because I want to keep stuff sort of warm. I could use the raw umber either way. Maybe I'd use the raw for this stuff and, you know, I don't know. This is more of a burnt umber thing. So I'm going to get out some paint and we'll pick up in a little bit. Put your likes, comment, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button if you don't mind. And I love your participation in action. Let me know if this is like watching paint dry, if I'm too slow, too boring, and not teaching you anything because... 
otherwise there's no point in either one of us using our energy and time for this discourse, right? So.